Okay guys, today what we're looking at is how to insulate a canopy. So I've just got a canopy fitted and before I start fitting anything into it, while it's all a blank space, I just want to try and thermally insulate it. So in the future, when I'm running ice boxes or fridges or whatever else, it won't need to work as hard to keep itself cool. So the benefit of doing this straight away is that there's nothing in the way in the canopy. It'll be easy to install. The downside is I can't do any AB testing by seeing how hot the canopy gets one day with no insulation and then seeing how hot it gets with insulation. But I'm told that the insulation is definitely worth doing and it's just something that doesn't really add a whole lot of weight to the car. But first things first, you just want to work out the surface area of all the different panels that you plan on insulating and that way when you head down to the shops you can buy the insulation. I'm hoping I can just clean the canopy with some isopropyl alcohol or some wax and grease remover and let that evaporate and then I should be able to just stick this on. I've bought myself an application roller from Jaker and that'll just help me push the insulation on. So I've just got laid out on the floor here, which I'll show you now, is this is Form Shield. This is from Clark Rubber. So the reason I went for this insulation, I don't know too much about the insulating properties about it, but I wanted something that was adhesive with a sticky back and I wanted something lightweight. So this is 10 mil by one meter and then you specify a length that you want it cut to. I think the increments are about 200 mil or something like that, so every 20 centimeters. I've gone for a five meter roll here. That is a little bit smaller than the total area that I'd calculated that I would need, but because I'm gonna be cutting some irregular shapes, I wanna see what I'm left over with and then recalculate towards the end. When you wanna calculate how much insulation you'll need, you gotta add up the individual panel areas. You can't just add every length times every width because that won't give you an accurate reading. You need to treat each panel or each section of that panel as a separate area and then add those areas together. So you might need to buy a little bit more than what you'd think when you cut it up, if you have to cut things at angles, then the leftover bits aren't actually going to fit where you want them to later down the track. So you might be left with a few unusable bits and you might have to go buy a little bit extra just to fill the remaining gaps. So the other thing I did when I was down at Clark Rubber, I bought some rubber matting. That's just to lay down on the floor of the canopy. This comes in about a 1.8 meter length. It's about 10 mil thick, and then you get it cut to length. I went for 1.4 meters because that fits the canopy perfectly. So the reason I got the rubber mat, it's not really because I think the canopy floor needs protection. It'll help stop things sliding around inside. And the other reason I wanted it is because I wanted that 10 mil thickness for some tie down points that I plan on installing in the future, but that will be covered in another video. The five meters of form shield insulation, that cost me $264.75. And the total weight of the form shield is only 2.7 kilos. So for the benefits it provides with thermal insulation, it's definitely worth the 2.7 kilos in weight increase. Got a five meter length there, so five square meters. You peel this side off and it's sticky back on the other side. Got five meters rolled out here just to try to straighten it out so there's no curve on it as I try and install it. For this job, I've just got some isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to spray on these microfiber towels just to try and clean the surface before I peel back the sticky back and put it on. Got a 600 mil level there and I've got a two meter one there just to try and mark out some straight lines on the insulation before I cut it. I'll try to cut it with a Stanley knife or even a pair of scissors would go through. This little roller here will just help me apply the sticky back and just roll it on and apply firm pressure across the whole thing. It's not a whole lot more else to it. In the canopy itself, you can see I've got a few long sections. This section will be split in two. Long section on the bottom here and the top will be split by the incoming cables. So with the front of the canopy, you do have the cab in front of it, so it will be a little bit insulated. While I'm doing it, I think I'll just do the whole thing. The doors I'll do in the closed position and with a little cutout around these air vents. So with the doors I'll do definitely this larger section here and then maybe this bit as well, but I'm not sure, I'll see how I go yet. The roof is cut up into lots of thin sections and then this channel either side here, I'll probably do as well. So with all these different size panels, I just wanna mark up what'll be the most efficient way to utilize the most of this as possible with each panel hopefully just having one piece. Now that won't always be possible. Some panels will have to have more than one piece just to try and use up as much as possible. But, but I think it'll look a little bit neater if each panel was restricted to just one piece.
So here's the finished product now. You can see the roof panels are done, the back inside the C channel for the rear tire mount. I've done these channels just above the door in two pieces and I've tried to fit edge to edge wherever possible. There was one roof panel I did where I actually tried to use up spare pieces but I wasn't happy with it. Uh, the front wall I did, even though the cab is in front of it, I decided to do the front wall as well. A bit of an awkward cut, didn't quite line up in the corner. You can see those strips of channel just above the door and see the missing strip beneath it, that has since been done. Uh, I haven't done where the central locking mechanisms are and I'll explain that a bit later on. I'll cut out around the air vents there and overall here's the panel where I used up multiple different pieces. It doesn't look anywhere near as good. There's this strip under the central locking as well. I haven't done that because it would be overkill and it's also it could affect the pinch weld balloon. Okay, so that's it for the insulation for now. I might add a little bit more later. I'm just gonna see how this goes. Now the cost of the insulation has changed. The initial purchase that I made was five square meters at 52.95 per square meter. When I had to go back and buy some more, when I knew how much I wanted at the end to finish the job, the price was $56.95 per square meter. So this is about four months apart, the different purchases, so prices are going up. So I calculated a rough area of about 5.3 to 5.5 square meters that I needed, but I needed seven square meters of actual roll just to try and get a clean cut. So each panel was just one piece. I tried the one roof panel with multiple pieces just to see what it looks like and I wasn't really happy with it. So although it costs a bit more, I prefer having each individual section as one complete piece. So you'll notice I haven't done the back of the central locking compartment and the reason is I might install some little LED lights on that part and then once they're in, I might be able to cut some insulation around the LED lights. But for now, I just wanna leave that blank. It's on the doors, it's not gonna get blocked in by anything that I mount in the canopy. It's always going to be accessible. I've finished all the guts of the canopy and the roof, the front, so I can mount the 12 volt headboard. I've done the back, so I can store anything against the back. I don't have one single piece large enough to do the back of the central locking section. So I can do that in two pieces per side, or I'll have to go buy more insulation. So this form shield, this is 10 mil thickness with adhesive backing. You can buy it with 15 mil thickness, 20 mil thickness. You can buy it to suit your application and how hot you think it's going to get. I like the 10 mil because it gives some insulation, but it's still lightweight. So just on the sticky backing, the isopropyl alcohol does help obviously remove all grease and dirt and stuff like that. But if you don't have isopropyl alcohol, you could probably just wipe it down with a microfiber towel to get rid of the surface layer of dust. That sticky backing is really strong because the form shield is so light per square meter that will never come off. You don't need to go too far into cleaning the canopy, but if it is dusty, then definitely you want to wipe it down with a microfiber towel. So total weight added to the canopy. The original five meter roll that I had was 2.7 kilos. It's 0.54 kilos per square meter. I bought another two square meters later on and I've weighed all these offcuts to, I think it was about 700 grams or thereabouts. So the total weight added to the canopy to insulate it was three kilos with the 10 mil form shield. All right, that's it. That's the canopy insulation. It is quite time consuming. Getting all your measurements and making all your cuts is a time consuming process. The more panels you have, the more measurements and cutting and stuff you'll have to do. You can easily do it in the course of a day. It's not going to add a lot of weight to your canopy and hopefully there's a lot of benefit to it. That's it, hopefully that's some help. Hello. In the canopy, as well as um, boop. So when you cut it up, you, so it'll help, it'll help things from, just so I could call it,